1969. My father is 10. In two months from now, the Americans put their first man on the moon and the whole village will gather around the communal black and white television to watch it. But he doesn't know that yet. Because outside it is dark and his whole town's on fire. He's in his living room with his mother, father, three sisters and two brothers. He doesn't know where his cat Felix is, but he hopes it's safe. He can hear it padding around the ceiling. He's a great ahead in school, but he doesn't understand the meaning of riot. He knows there's a curfew and that two Chinese men have been shot in a nearby village for being in the wrong place. He hears the heavy footsteps of running soldiers outside seconds before BAM! The door flies open. Dan goes off his hinges and a young man in green stands in the door wearing a spear and a rifle. His mother gathers the children behind her as she steps back. Everyone has their hands in the air. His youngest brother takes cover behind sofa and his father has a barrel under the chin, the soldier says. Anda andala pengacau. Saya boleh menambah anda sekarang. You're troublemakers, you know. I can shoot you now. The soldier sweeps his rifle around the room as if brushing the dust away. And then he turns to leave. The father thanks the heavens that it's a pointless act of intimidation. His father sends the children up to bed and they gently close the door. No one sleeps at night, and in the morning it is 1979 and my father is 20. He walks to the gymnasium of his school. He's already failed his A-levels once, but he knows he's got to try again. His classmates are two years younger than he is, and he can hear their sneakers shuffling on, on the linoleum floor. He sits down at his table and he looks at the paper in front of him. It's a different subject from the one he studied the last time, but he's always been an artist, and he always knows that's what Malaysia wants. It's a developing country looking for scientific talent. He exhales and picks up his ballpoint pen. He tests the back of his left hand to make sure it's working. The invigilator is watching the clock. My father wipes his palms on his hands. The invigilator tells everyone to turn the papers over. The second hand begins to count down. My father begins to write, like hell, as if his life depends on it, because he knows it probably does. But just after the paper's over, it's 1989 when he's 30. He's sitting at a bar in a Singaporean disco with a woman who's made at university, no. He looks into her clear brown eyes and her white blouse that glows in the flashing lights. Her long black hair reaches down to her waist, but he realizes that's just because she's short. <laughs> she asks him why he's here. Why, if he was the only Chinese to receive a scholarship from his home state, he isn't in Malaysia anymore. He smiles and thanks the economic downturn. The old money dried up, he says. This country was forced to finally set him free. She laughs and pulls him up to the dance floor. He stands a full head above her, but in their wedding picture, they will be the same height. <laughs>